Okay. So hello everybody. Good evening. Welcome to Vaidya's Chess Hub. Uh, this is the lecture for the under 1400 guys. And uh, we are going to consider this as the part 2 of the opening pitfalls that we are studying. In the last lecture we studied uh, 4 traps I believe. And we will take this as part 2 of it. And so we will start off with the Rubinstein trap. We are also going to talk about, uh, hey, hello, Blogs with Sagar. Blogs with Sagar, are you my student Sagar or are you somebody else? Kindly reveal your identity. We are also going to talk about uh, the schedule for the under 1400 guys because Namish, apparently one of our students, uh, he missed the session where we talked about our uh, sessions. So we will talk about what are the timings and uh, what uh, is the, the new timing for the Swiss League tournament and so on and so forth. The first thing what we will do is uh, be ready with a notepad. I want you to be ready with a notepad because you have to write down, jot down the moves as usual. So Dishan is here. Welcome Dishan. I, I hope you are ready with a notepad here. Because we are going to continue with our opening pitfalls. This is the part 2. Purvesh is here. I'm going to pop a question in the chat. You have to be ready with the notepad. Alright, the first one is the Rubinstein trap. Pooja ma'am is also here. Very good evening. Blogs with Sagar. I'm still interested in finding out if you are my student Sagar or your some other Sagar. D4 and D5 is how the game started or rather normally D4, D5 to make good use of this Rubinstein trap. Then you go for knight to F3 and knight to F6. Pretty normal looking start and then you go for the king's, uh, queen's gambit decline sort of a setup with uh, C4 and then pawn on E6. Now you go about pinning the knight on this square f6 by the bishop on g5. The knight is said to be relatively pinned, not absolutely pinned. This knight on f6 is said to be relatively uh, pinned. People are saying that the volume is low, but I believe now it's sorted. I believe we should have a loud volume by now. I don't think there is any issue about that. Well, Rutu is here. Hello, Rutu. How are you? You've reached this position. I hope the seniors are busy with their tournament. They were supposed to play in a tournament today because this lecture is for the under 1400, not for the above 1400. Now, this knight is pinned and black will unpin the knight, but not exactly unpin. Let's say give it another support. So, it is knight B D7. Knight B D seven. Remember, guys. Knight B D seven. Knight B D seven. You cannot just write Knight D seven. And why not? Because both the knights could have come to this D seven square. So how do we know which knight actually jumped onto that D seven square? So we will say Knight B D seven. Hey, Radesh is here. Hello, Radesh. Welcome. Okay, guys, so knight b d7. You cannot say knight d7. It is knight b d7. That's how you actually do it. And now I believe uh, Grant Uthekar is here. Ankit Banerjee has joined us. Hello from Kolkata. And uh, Shreyan is here. Yatharth is here as well. Welcome, all of you. We are uh, doing the part two of the opening pitfalls and we have reached this position. The first one is Rubinstein Trap. I repeat, the name is Rubinstein Trap. So, R-U-B-I-N-S-T-E-I-N. R-U-B-I-N-S-T-E-I-N. Rubinstein Trap. This is the trap number five. I uh, bet that um, we studied the traps one to four last time, if I remember well. Vyang has joined us. I'm surprised he has. He should be playing a tournament, but maybe it starts at 6.30. The seniors probably start playing at 6.30. Vyang, let me know if I'm right. 
So please copy the name correctly in your notepad. Very important. Rubinstein trap. The night is still pinned. And I was telling you about writing it correctly. So it's night BD7. Don't just write night D7. It's night BD7. All right. After night BD7, white uh, needs to, you know, bring about development of his light colored bishop. So white will go ahead and play E3, opening up the prospects for this light colored bishop. Black goes about bishop e7, getting ready to castle. Things are looking okay for both as of now, no problems. White then introduces the knight into the, the attack and black castles. That's called short castling, the king side castling, 0-0. I have a question for all the under 1400 guys. The voice is not low at all. The voice is not low at all, this one. I believe your settings have uh, been affected. Check the volume. Voice is perfect. The voice levels are perfect. Um, there's no problem with the voice level. Initially there was, but now it's all sorted. It is perfect. It's no problem. You can refresh your stream. Maybe the problem will get resolved. Okay. I don't know. You refresh it. That's all. That's all I can say, this one. Refresh your, uh, uh, you know, device or whatever it is. You can restart or whatever. Try doing that. The volume is perfect. There's no problem from my side. Let's continue. Here, Black's last move was to castle. And now, the trap is set. If you play the move, Rook C1. This is the trap that White will set for Black. After Rook C1, Black would play... Rook e8, bringing the rook, lining the rook with our king. Always try to line up important pieces. White will continue with queen to c2. Notice how much pressure is being put on that c7 pawn. At the moment, of course, there is pawn and knight in the way. But then things will change very rapidly, as you will see why. Black in the game will play a6. The idea is to stop knight b5. Because one thing is for sure, you want to exchange the pawns that will clear the path and bring the knight to b5 that will clear the knight out of the way. And then suddenly the queen and the rook battery will start attacking the c7 pawn. That's the way it is uh, going to be. That is fantastic. This sun has sorted out the net issue, the, vo the volume issue that is. All right. So what happens here? Black has just played the move a6. Now the line is being cleared by white. C takes d5 and then e takes d5 by black. Pretty standard exchange there, no problems. Bishop to d3 and black will play c6. So clearly black is uh, saying that now the point of c6 is not valid anymore. I just pushed the pawn. Let's see now, this is getting interesting. Castling by white. Knight to e4 by black, suddenly attacking this piece three times and it's defended only once. Guys, always important, you guys are under 1400. Always when your opponent plays something, if he's attacking, always ask yourself this question. How many times is it attacked? How many times is it defended? Are things looking okay? Is anything hanging? Is my opponent overlooking something? Ask yourself those questions. And I'm sure you play accordingly when you play on Monday, when the seniors are with you. Now in the Rubinstein trap, you don't go for the bishop exchange. What you actually play is you bring the bishop back to f4 and look now why this trap is so widely popular. Black plays f5, solidifying the position for the knight. So now in case white takes with the knight here, then you can take with a pawn and suddenly white is losing. Observe how the pawn creates the fork. I want you to clearly observe the board. So if knight takes e4, then f takes e4 and suddenly the pawn's forking. Always be alert with such things here. All right. So definitely white won't do that. And that is why this trap is so popular. 
Believe it or not, White's next move is Knight takes d5. Believe it or not. Knight takes d5 is the best move. Namish, let's talk about uh, you a little while. Uh, let's talk. Now guys, just hold on to that game. I have something to share with you all. Namish, the stream is always there. It's just that you have to tune in. Start searching it on time. We start at 7, uh, 17.55. That's 5.55. So you have 5 minutes to search properly and join us live. Please do that. Another thing is, we are going to now talk about the schedule. Please make a note of that in the notepad. How come Namish you are not aware of what the schedule is? Everyone is aware about how the new schedule is going to work. We decided that in December last year. And you still don't know about it is perplexing. So listen to it properly now. Tuesday and Thursdays are for the above 1400 guys. Wednesday, which is today, Wednesdays and Fridays, 6 o'clock, 1800 hours to 1900 hours is for the under 1400 guys for you. Make a note of this. What two days did I mention? Wednesday, which is today and Friday, 6 to 7. Namish, make a note of this. I ain't saying this again. And on Monday from 6 to 8, roughly for two hours, you have to play the Swiss League tournament, which is for all the seniors, the juniors, absolute beginners, everybody. I hope now you are perfectly aware of the schedule. Namish and all those who did not know about the schedule for some reason have said it. Enough. Let's continue. Let's get back to the game. Vyang saying that uh, Savamitra is not playing today, but he is playing. All the best, Vyang. Please post your. Uh, performance and uh, you know ranking on the whatsapp group guys we were on this move where white just played knight takes d5 and black for the moment is very happy because black will just take this knight and now i want you to think about it it is white to play let's see who types first what is white's best move here the trap is complete and black has fallen in the trap so, what exactly under 1400 guys? What is it? I think my student from Badlapur answered this or something. But then the message was retracted. And now the message, Bishop C7. Now, how many people agree with that? You have to tell me. How many people agree with this suggested move? Namish thinks it's Queen B3 for some reason. Rutu also thinks queen b3. Consider this move, guys. Bishop c7. Do you like this move, bishop c7? Do you think queen b3 is even better than bishop c7? Yathart likes bishop c7. Yathart is saying bishop c7 is good. I like that, he says. Rayanch also says bishop c7. And now suddenly people agree with Jayesh because now very very important you realize that bishop c7 actually traps the black queen and that is fantastic i mean if you play the move that i've suggested bishop c7 the queen is a goner queen is kind of smothered <laughs> surprising kind of smothered because it's not the knight it's this bishop on c7 but yeah sort of smothered because every other direction she has her own pieces that won't let her move. So, bishop c7 is absolutely the right move and the trap is complete. Remember, this is called the Rubinstein trap. And so, uh, we are going to take a look at this game one more time. You can jot down the moves now. We will go slowly, kindly jot down the moves. d4, d5, the first move. d4, d5. Have your notepad ready, guys. I hope you are jotting it down properly. D4, D5, I'll dictate. Knight to F3, Knight to F6. Knight F3, Knight F6. That's the move number two. C4, 
e6, c4, e6, bishop g5, knight bd7, bishop g5, knight bd7, e3, bishop e7, e3, bishop e7, knight c3, and castle, knight c3, and castle, rook c1, rook e8, rook c1, and rook e8, queen c2, and a6, queen c2, and a6, c takes d5 and e takes d5 i repeat c takes d5 and e takes d5 bishop d3 c6 is very important castle by white and knight e4 by black castling by white and knight e4 by black Bishop f4, move number 12, bishop f4, f5 by black, bishop f4, black plays f5, knight takes e4 is a blunder, the correct move in the trap is knight takes d5, knight takes d5, c takes d5, you can put a question mark there. For c takes d5 and now bishop c7 the trap is complete. The trap is complete. Meanwhile Ankit has uh, given us an, a suggestion that the channel should be open. We should continue the lectures. Ankit that is totally the plan. No doubt about it. I have already said that the Swiss league tournaments will continue. The channel is going to be there. Uh, why is this one saying the channel is not going to run? I have no idea. <laughs> the channel will be there. In fact, after the hub reopens, I'll have a lot of time to post or upload videos. At the moment, we are using, you must have noticed, at the moment, we only use YouTube for the live sessions. Once the hub reopens, I might upload some videos. Very important. The, the thing that I used to do before the COVID-19 struck, so, Ankit, your suggestion is welcome and it will continue. In fact, the Swiss League tournament will continue. All the students, even after the vaccination program and the hub reopens, even after that, the Monday tournament, 7 to 6 to 8, for 12 rounds of Swiss League will continue. There will be some sessions that I'll have online. 100%, 100%. So, Ankit, don't worry. We'll always be in touch. All right, guys, time now to go to our next trap. By the way, the name of this trap that we just studied is Rubinstein. Okay. The next trap is very special for me. It's the number six on our list. And this is uh, special because it's something that I must know <laughs> because I play the Smith Mora defense a lot, or rather, Smith Mora gambit a lot. So this is the one trap that I know by heart and every player who practices this Smith Mora idea should know this. Thank you so much for the compliments Ankit. And uh, Dishan is saying I meant he told keep the channel I said it will be there only what is okay or fine. So now this time we've understood that probably you meant that the channel is going nowhere. Oh, we young uh, take keen interest then in this trap. This is known as the Siberian trap. And this is very important for the players to know. So I'm going to show the trap which is set by black for white. So as a uh, if you are going to play the Smith Mora Gambit as a, as a player with white pieces, you must be aware about this. So obviously, no need to tell me, tell you separately about the opening moves. 
The opening moves are very easy. E4, C5, D4, pawn exchange. So let me do it. E4. Okay. Very simple, is it not? Very, very simple. C5, D4, C takes D4, C3, pawn takes, knight takes, and knight C6. Now these are typical moves out of the opening. White will develop the other knight as well. And black to set up this trap will play e6. Guys, properly see to it that you understand this trap very well. I'm showing the trap the way black sets the trap. But at the same time, I'll also simultaneously tell you as a player with white pieces that if you know the Siberian trap and if black tries that trap on you, should you play correctly, black will always lose. I'm sure we hung loved that line. <laughs> I'm sure that we hung loved that line. Well, uh, I, I believe Avdut, the monitor is saying it was outside. It was a little late for the lecture. Okay. So, we hung, please remember that if the player, black player is going for the Siberian trap, let him go for the Siberian trap. Because if you play correctly, black will always lose. Okay, so let's continue. How is, uh, you know, white going to play here? You should play bishop to c4. In the smith Mora, bishop to c4 is always the idea. With the knight on c3, the queen will go on e2. Castling shall happen. The bishop on f4 or g5 were required. And this rook here on a will go on to the d or uh, rather c1 square. And the rook on h1 post castling will find itself on the open d5 or the semi open d5. That's how you want to play when you play the Smith Mora. Normally, that's the idea. What will black play here? Black will set up the Siberian trap with queen c7. Everybody in your notepad, wherever you have mentioned the name Siberian trap, you must, it, it is, yeah, Vihang, it is like the fishing pole trap, yeah, sort of, not totally, sort of. Whenever black goes for this queen c7 move, you can be sure that he is going to try the Siberian trap. It's a... It's a typical move, queen to c7. So white must make subtle changes and not just fall in the trap by playing some regular moves. I recommend a strong idea of playing g3 and bishop to f4. So, so Vihang should make a note of this. What did I just say? If your opponent goes for a move like queen c7, you should go for the pawn on g3, although it's not exactly a Fianchetto idea, should put the pawn on g3 and then go for bishop f4. That permanently puts the Siberian attack out of the equation. Black player cannot go for the Siberian trap in a successful manner if you put the pawn on g3 and the bishop is on f4. Black will lose every time. So you should be happy you see queen c7 over the board. Maybe black wants to just try. But let us first find out how white normally falls in it, in the trap, if he doesn't know. Queen e2, I've already said this is typical Smith Mora play. Now white will castle. The rook will come on the d1 square. And uh, this rook on a1 comes on c1 and the bishop will move. So after queen to e2, there's knight g4. And now look at the... I beg your pardon. Guys, hold on. Oh, castling is the move here. I beg your, I be, I beg your pardon. Castling is the move, guys. Castling is the move. Move number 7 is castling to which black plays knight to f6 and then queen e2. The move order was a little interchange. And now black goes for this move which is knight to g4 and the trap is set. Because now white will try to shoo away the knight by playing h3. The moment, the moment that happens, disaster. Because black now plays this knight 
तो d4 attacking the queen yes the knight can be taken but the knight is the only defender of h2 and there will be checkmate so knight cannot be taken because the knight is attacking the queen take a look at this messed up position for white this is really this is really crazy there's no h5 here yeah? that's why this trap is a little different than the fishing pole i told you it is sort of fishing pole but not exactly fishing pole trap no need for h5 here knight d4 is killing white's done here in this game white is done in this game and yeah ankit is right monitor you shouldn't be late the monitor of the class is late ankit has made a very valid observation here ha <laughs> monitor what's up huh? demands an apology don't be late for the lecture dude by the way another thing i wanted to share with you is uh, that uh, i have sent the papers the entries to omkar sir and omkar sir has agreed that he will send you uh, a model answer paper that would be fantastic it would most probably be a pdf file so you would have the model answer paper so you can also go through the expected answer i am not sure ankit did that ankit did you did you attempt that did you solve the paper so omkar sir has agreed that he will send the model answer paper so you can also be sure that uh, you know the answers are whatever marks it is that he offers you uh, know about your performance and if your answers are wrong you know the correct answers the moment he shares the pdf with me i will share it with you put it on our whatsapp group kindly make a note of that it is very important monitor is saying need to travel from my grandmother's place to my place so monitor is saying next time i probably take care oh ankit has not attempted the test ankit is there on our whatsapp group i mean i did put the uh, question paper sure sure do it ankit last date for submission was yesterday you should have done that long ago but anyway do it for pleasure sake anyway now why is white done here is because if the knight is taken then the queen will be lost if white tries to save the queen then knight takes knight check first it's a check you know the rule the check comes first uh, and after pawn takes knight it is still queen h2 checkmate this is really painful to watch that's why the siberian trap is disaster if white doesn't know how to deal with it but if white knows how to deal with it i have already said that black will never win <laughs> when i play the smith mora i so want my opponents to actually try that i so want them to try this put queen on c7 i'm going to put the pawn on g3 bishop on f4 and the game is done so we hung i'm sure you'll make a note of this h5 is not this trap h5 is not the right way to do it that's why i said h5 is not this trap at all you don't need h5 here guys let us look at the trap one more time i'm going to dictate the moves now to make sure you have your notepad ready i'm going to dictate the moves e4 c5 d4 c takes d4 c3 d takes c3 knight takes c3 knight c6 you can of course watch this stream again in order to jot down the moves if you miss out on any one particular move knight f3 e6 bishop c4 queen c7 this is the move that starts the siberian trap castling by white knight f6 queen e2 start the trap now knight to g4 that's it and h3 if white plays h3 the game is done for white because now knight d4 attacks the queen attacks the knight and if knight takes the knight then queen h2 is checkmate if the queen is saved i showed you knight takes f3 is check followed by h2 mate 
if pawn takes the knight, the knight takes queen is a check and story is over for why? Let me know if you like that and how should you avoid the trap? I showed you that. That's right here when the moment he plays queen to c7, he can go for a move like uh, g3 and the idea is to have the bishop put on f4. Then the Siberian trap does not work. Please properly make a note of that. Then the Siberian trap does not work. What if knight? Uh, what if after knight f6 we play h3 and then go queen e2? Does that still work for black? So let's see what Vyang is saying. After knight f6, let's go to the game. So Vyang is saying after knight to f6, if black, if white then plays h3. Then what move do you suggest black plays here? You have to suggest a move for black. You have to suggest a move for black here. <laughs> what do you want black to play? That's the thing there. That's why this is important. Now it is black's turn to play. Black will not just go knight g4 right now. I mean that that's not making sense. Because when the knight comes on d4, we want the queen to be on e2. That's the whole point. So let's say if black now plays h5, I don't think, yeah, okay. Now if you play queen e2, now yes, the trap works. Now let's say if you play the move like knight to g4, taking that will be a blunder. Because now if you take that 100%, it is better for black. Not winning, but better. Okay, queen goes back. Bishop to f4. See how common this idea bishop to f4 is? Just remember I told you this idea. So instead of going for all of this, instead of going for all of this, the moment black plays queen to c7, you be ready with your idea of playing the move. You can delay that by one more move. Computer suggesting casting here. You can go for g3 and go for bishop to f4. That in my opinion is the best way to save, uh, you know, the day for you. And mind you, not just save the day. I have said this and I maintain this, that if you play this move, in all the games you will have black losing. Black doesn't win after that. Because black has invested too much in trying to set up for the trap. And the queen is not on the world's best diagonal there, mind you. The queen is not on the best diagonal. You can do more research on this. Okay. I'm going to recommend a player here. Guys, this is a very important uh, thing I'm going to share. You have the notepad with you and Vihang especially. Now, you're going for the tournament. Just make a note of one last thing. The name of the player is Mark Esserman. Mark Esserman, Vihang. Mark Esserman. Why am I recommending Mark Esserman? Because he is someone who plays the smith mora gambit regularly and he has talked about this Siberian trap a lot and extensively. So you can search online for the Siberian trap Mark Esserman who plays the smith mora gambit regularly. Please study his game. If you play the smith mora, you've got to know the Siberian trap. And we young now all the best for the tournament. Go. Guys, Mark Esserman, please remember that. Mark Esserman, Siberian trap. Let's go back to the game. What? Yes, we hung your right, Mark Esserman. You have done that correctly. Search for Siberian trap. So then, how does white fall into the trap? In this way. All right. Time now to go to our uh, third trap for today, which is in the Budapest Gambit. And it is again from, it is a trap set by black for white. Let us find out. How does that happen? D4 by white. F5 by black. Guys, this is the Budapest Gambit. D4, 
This is also the Dutch, by the way. Is it not? Let's do this. Guys, change of move order, please. D4, knight f6. C4, e5. Yeah, that's more like it. You cannot have the, the pawn first taken and then... I was going to transpose and come to this position. But I think this is better. Pawn takes. Knight goes to e4. Knight f3 by white. d6 is the move by black. e takes d6. Bishop takes d6. g3. Probably Fianchetto is the idea there. And now the trap is set. Knight takes f2. What a beautiful move this is. Now let me stop over here at this move in order to ask the under 1400 guys a question. It's not toothpaste. It's the Budapest. The capital city. So the spelling, you've gotten the spelling wrong there. The Budapest. Number seven. Number seven. <clears throat> Ankit, we should see you also playing in some local tournaments and doing well. You have strong potential of doing that. No doubt. Even Saumitra is good. Vihang and Saumitra are showing remarkable progress. So is Samartha, by the way. So we hope that there will be a lot of champions from the Vaidya's Chess Hub in the future. And Vaidya's Chess Hub is going to expand, Ankit. We'll have a, in fact, last year itself we had uh, the plans for the franchises we wanted to open. But then suddenly the COVID-19 struck us all. Guys, I have asked you a question. And the question is, why did black sacrifice on F2? Jayesh Gazre, please, please, please type properly. Bishop G6, is that even possible? Is that even possible, Bishop G6? Is that even possible? I think you are making a typing mistake. There is a typo there. Is it Bishop G6? I don't think Bishop G6. Rayansh, it is not just to open up the king. There is a trap. You will win the queen there. It's a nice fork. You must have noticed that knight, there is a powerful fork here. So after king takes f2, you should see such things. The queen is hanging. So this bishop will move to this square g3 with the check. Bishop takes g3 check. Sagar is thinking maybe bishop c5 check. Bishop c5 check is not good. Now how many of you agree with bishop c5 check? Sagar, I will show you why bishop c5 check is not good. Bishop c5 check is not good because the king can go back again to e1. And then you will have to make the sacrifice of the bishop again. And then win the queen. It will be a very complicated process. It will be a very complicated process. I'll show you what happens. Sagar, watch this. If you play bishop c5, the king can go back to e1. Again, protecting the queen. And you'll have to again play a move like bishop to f2 check. Then king takes, then queen takes. That would be the order. So better move is bishop takes g3 check. So the king cannot simply go to the e1 square. Sagar, kindly type in the chat if you have understood something new here. That, that was good. Right there. That is awesome. That's why bishop takes g3 is better. I am sure you understood that. You realize that. Bishop takes g3 is good for a reason. Now the king cannot go on e1, you see. Now the king cannot go back to e1. So that's why... Bishop takes g3 check is good. So king takes g3 and the queen is free. Let's see again how the trap works. If your opponent 
takes this pawn. How does that happen? Let me just dictate the moves. d4, knight f6, c4. And so far, this is going, uh, uh, you know, in the same way as the Nimzo Indian defense goes. But instead of e6, for the Nimzo Indian, you play e6 here. Instead of that, you are going to play the Budapest, which is the e5, the Budapest de defense, okay? So the move is e5, pawn takes knight to e4. And uh, after knight f3, allow him to exchange on d6, take back with the bishop. And the moment he plays g3 or some other move, you can make this lovely sacrifice. By the way, not knight c3, then it, then it doesn't work. This is a very nice trap. Mind you, if the king takes not bishop c5, the correct way to go is bishop takes g3 check. Please remember that. King takes and queen is free. I hope that you are loving all the traps that I am showing you. Guys, so far we have done 7 opening pitfalls or 7 opening traps with the names. I want somebody, I think Prajna, you should do this. Yes, Prajna, this is similar to the tennis and gambit. You are right. Prajna is absolutely right. This is somewhat similar to the tennis and gambit. I agree. Completely. Prajna agreed. This is similar to that. I have an assignment for you guys. Type all the... Your monitor is here. Type the three traps that I have taught today. One by one. Number five, number six and number seven. So that we can go on to the last one for today. Eight to one. If there is time, I will show you the number nine as well. If there is time. Yes, I will repeat the moves. Pooja ma'am wants me to repeat the moves. Let me show it to you one more time, Pooja ma'am. Watch it. D4, knight f6. C4, e5. You play the pawn to e5. Allow white to take. Knight to e4. Knight f3. D6. Then the pawn takes on d6, bishop takes d6, g3 by by, and the trap is set. Knight takes f2. Brilliant sacrifice and uh, it's a fork already. Black is winning here. And after king takes f2, bishop takes g3 check. King takes g3 and then queen takes d1. Very, very important. Guys, who is going to type it? Type it. I want you to type it in the chat. Monitor is here. Monitor can do that or Prajna can do that. What was the fifth one, guys? Number five, number six, and number seven. Arya Mahakar has done it. Fifth one is Rubinstein. He got the spelling wrong. Arya, you got the spelling wrong. Siberian trap, the number six, and number seven is that Budapest trap. By the way, Rubinstein, you got the spelling wrong there. R-U-B-I-N-S-T-E-I-N. That's the Rubinstein trap. Rutu got it right. Rutu got it right. But Arya, thank you so much. Very active student. Arya, good. So now, let me take you to our trap number 8, which is the Blackburn trap. You all know this as the Shilling Caustic Gambit. Shilling caustic gambit, but you can also call it the Blackburn shilling trap. I'm going to type the spelling Blackburn B L A C K B U R N E. Let me type it. Shilling is S H I W -L, L I N G. Blackburn shilling trap. It was one of the it was in one of the videos that I've covered this guys on our channel you will have the video by the name shilling caustic gambit watch it that's your assignment uh, as a homework under 1400 guys that's your homework the shilling caustic gambit watch that I wonder if Ankit has watched it there is this video that is there on our channel shilling caustic gambit Remember, shilling can also be spelled S-C-H, some variation of the spelling. 
Now this one is again a trap that black sets for white. And you would love this because the star is the Italian. E4, E5, Knight F3, Knight C6, Bishop C4. And we are playing with the black pieces here. How to set this trap? Immediately we have arrived at that position where black is now going to make a very interesting move. e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6, bishop c4. And it is here now that black will start the trap. Prashna knows it, but Prashna don't say it. Hold, relax. Black plays this immediate move, actually wanting white to take the pawn on e5. That's why I said it's a very interesting line. Black has moved the knight to d4 and black actually wants white to take that pawn on e5. 100% and white will learn it the hard way not to take that pawn there. I'll show you why. Knight takes e5 and immediately you have queen to g4 attacking the pawn on g2 and also attacking the knight on e5. Just notice how powerful this queen move now is. Just remember queen to g5. The knight is also under attack, the pawn on g2 is hanging and that's a very bad thing because that rook on a, h1 is hanging then. He cannot save both in one move. He cannot save both in one move. That is not possible. So now, if he cannot save both, what's going to happen? Well, white will say, let me at least, uh, you know, fork. So if you take then at least I get the rook. Guys, notice every move here. What is white saying here? White saying, let me take on f7. If you take on g2, well, at least I'll get your rook on h8. So I think that's okay. That could work. But let's see if that really works. <laughs> it doesn't. Because black now will continue with his plan. Queen takes g2. And suddenly, out of nowhere, okay, uh, black, white realizes there, there are problems here. White realizes there are problems here. Because white, if he goes ahead with his plans to take this rook on h8, well, then the point is queen takes h1 is check. And then the king has no moves because the knight's covering e2 square. So the first move here, if knight takes h8, then white, black will play queen takes h1 check. Then the first move is bishop to f1. And then queen can come back and take on e4 with a check. I'll show you the line, guys. If now white takes this knight on h8, hoping that it's a rook for a rook, it's a check. The king has no moves, knight's covering e2. So bishop f1 is the move. Now black goes, queen takes e4 check. Notice that you cannot block it with the queen, otherwise just knight takes queen and end of story. The knight will take the queen. I mean, how sad is that? How sad is that? So, he can try bishop e2, but now, let's say, well, not knight f3, not knight f3, knight takes c2 is better, knight takes c2 check, because the queen is supporting it, and now white has to sacrifice the queen. Why does white have to sacrifice the queen? Because if he moves the king, then queen h1 is just checkmate. Watch the board. I mean, this is horrible. This is just horrible. 
If now king goes to f1, queen h1 is checkmate and black will win. That's why I said that white queen, there is, I mean, has to take the knight on c2. It is just unstoppable. So, yeah, at this point, after black took on g2, first white plays rook f1. That's the way to go. Because white has calculated that if you take the knight, I showed you the line, what happens. Okay, well, I just told you what happens there. Now, how does black continue here? The idea is the same. Queen takes e4 check. Now, this is crazy. Because now, again, the same idea. If queen e2, then knight just takes the queen. So he, he, he blocks it with the bishop. Only this time, you don't have to play the move suggested earlier. You can just play the knight to f3. And that is a smothered mate. Guys, look at the position here. This is, this is crazy stuff. It's just crazy. So just remember that knight f3 is a fantastic checkmate. And uh, the smothered mate, the mate that we all just love. I mean, look at the way white's pieces are stopping his own king from getting to any safe square. This looks horrible. And mind you, bishop cannot take the knight because bishop is pinned by the queen. I'm sure you loved it, guys. I have shown you in that video, if you are the white player, how not to fall in the trap. In fact, I will quickly show it to you over here. But in the video, I have dealt with this topic in detail. So I want you to watch the video. Don't just rely on this. Watch the special exclusive video, how to handle the shilling caustic gambit. Just remember, Let's first, let's first see how this trap occurred and then I'll show you how, how as white you will avoid this, guys. E4, E5, Puja ma'am, I hope you are ready. E4, E5, Knight F3, Knight C6, Bishop C4. So that's the Italian game. Immediately black plays Knight 2. You can try this, okay? Knight D4 and wait for, just hope that white will take this pawn on E5. Queen g5, omg, queen g5, and knight takes f7, which is a fork, no problem, queen takes g2, rook f1, queen takes e4 check, bishop e2 to block the check, if the queen blocks the check, the knight just takes, and knight to f3 is check mate. This is just horrible for white. So want to see the board like this. Let's now go back and find out how you should handle this from white side. So now everybody, I flip the board, stop writing or whatever it is that you're doing and watch this because there is every chance that black might try this when you play on leeches. Well, if you play this, if you are playing the Italian game, I believe Avdut plays that. Italian game, right? Rayanj plays that a lot. Grunt plays that a lot. Italian game, I'm not sure. Anyway, so the bishop c4 and then you have knight to d4. The way, the best way in my opinion to handle this is not to take the pawn. You've seen that that's an error. The right way to go is the knight taking knight move. Knight takes knight, let pawn take this one. You can go for the move c3 immediately. Immediately, I'm saying. So after pawn takes pawn, you can go for knight takes and then castle d4 should be your standard idea. That's how you normally play anyway, isn't it? So knight takes knight should be the standard idea. So Avdut, the monitor, is saying I normally play the Spanish, the bishop b5 move. But yeah, sometimes he plays bishop c4 also. So Avdut, please remember black may try this against you. So the right way to go is knight takes knight. 
not knight takes pawn. So what move am I saying? In this position, the correct move is the red arrow and not the chrome arrow. The correct way to play if you are the player with the white pieces is play the move shown by the red arrow, not the chrome arrow. Please remember that. Somebody go ahead and type the name again, the names of the traps, number 5, 6, 7 and 8. That's going to be important. We have about 10 minutes more. And so I've decided that we will go for the England Gambit Trap. The England Gambit Trap, you can call it the D4 E5 Trap. That's your number 9 for today, by the way. Again, it's the trap that is set by black for white. And you know that, I mean, I'm sure that you must have seen that I have started playing the England Gambit a lot now. Against D4. Good, Rayanch is saying now I play the Danish Gambit as well. We have a lot of videos on Danish Gambit for sure. Guys, this one is the England Gambit trap. D4 and you play E5. Immediately, you want to sacrifice the pawn. White normally takes that pawn and you go for the move knight to C6, attacking the hanging pawn. The natural move for white is knight f3, defending the pawn that is attacked once, defended once. Always keep a track of how many times it is attacked and defended. You always have to note, note these things, guys. Okay. What happens now? It's an interesting one. What happens now? The attack continues. And you will attack the pawn one more time with the queen. So now if you see, the attack is now, it's the pawn is attacked two times and it's defended once. What's the natural way for uh, white to just go about this? If you have attacked it twice, you got to defend it twice as well. So the way that uh, white player will continue here is with this move bishop f4. And Honestly speaking, I've had a lot of players losing in this line. It's quite natural for white to feel that he should keep the lead with that pawn up advantage. So you attack the pawn twice and then you have white defending it twice because he wants to keep that lead. What happens next? The pawn is attacked twice and defended twice. And now your trap is set. Good news, right? Already the, the trap is set. How is the trap set here? It's queen b4 check. Now queen b4 check you can find out is a fork. And it's attacking multiple targets. <laughs> multiple targets because the pawn on b2 is hanging there is a check the bishop on f4 is being attacked so you have all those pieces under threat and you cannot defend all of them can you i repeat you cannot defend all of them you can defend a couple of them for example the bishop on f4 and the king on e1 for sure you can do something about that but what about that pawn on b2 that is hanging it's very important. So, with that in mind, what happens is, of course, the bishop is going to be saved. So, white will drop the bishop back to d2, save the check and the bishop at least. So, now do we go ahead and take the pawn? I have a question. Do we go ahead and take the pawn? Should the queen take the pawn on b2? Should that be played? Should that happen?
You should take it. The answer is yes. Namish is right. You should take that pawn. Now this rook is in the corner, jam-packed. Absolutely jam-packed. The only way to save it, only way I'm saying, is bishop to c3. Everything is natural here. Everything is so natural here. <laughs> there is no move that you would feel is like artificial. Now the bishop is supported by the knight. The bishop is indirectly supporting the rook. The bishop is attacking the queen. Just look at the way the position is. Everything looks defended everywhere here. Oh, magnificent. So then if everything is protected here, what happens now? Is interesting, isn't it? What happens now? Now you play the move bishop b4 and this is known as a cross pin or something. In a, it's not exactly a cross pin. The reason is, it's a simple pin, not a cross pin. The reason is that now the bishop cannot take the queen because it's an absolute pin. And the bishop, if it takes our bishop, then the rook on a1 is not protected suddenly. It's interesting. Absolutely. Lovable. <laughs> so now, white has to make a decision. And now, the way <laughs> white responds normally is queen d2. Done. That's it. White can as good as resign after playing this move. Believe it or not. White is done here. Because now bishop c3, the queen is pinned. If the knight takes the bishop, then the rook is hanging. So white will say, hang on, let me take with the queen. The queen is supported by the knight. The queen is supporting the rook indirectly. Can you tell me what is black's move here? What is the move for black here, guys? Under 1400, guys. Come on. Trap number 9. What's the move here? Namish, type it properly. Namish, type it properly. Namish is saying queen d1 checkmate. Namish, type it properly. What has Rayanch done? Why do you need so much of a long cut? Arya Mahakal is right. Queen c1 is just check and mate. Guys, what's up? This is just plain and simple checkmate. Imagine if you get to play such games, how delighted would you be with this result? Phenomenal. Absolutely phenomenal. Queen c1 is checkmate. Awesome. Awesome, awesome. Queen c1, end of story. Let's go through this trap one more time. We always revise, don't we? E4. No, not E4. Beg your pardon. D4 and E5. Pawn takes pawn and you play knight C6. Knight F3 to defend the pawn. Queen E7 attacking the pawn one more time. So bishop to F4 defending it one more time. Queen b4 to give a check and attack the bishop. So bishop d2. But now you take the pawn on b2. Bishop c3. The knight's defending it. You pin the bishop with bishop b4. So the queen cannot be taken. Queen d2. Bishop takes c3. The queen is pinned. And if knight takes the bishop, then rook on a1 is free. So queen takes bishop. And now queen c1. Is just checkmate. This is just amazing. Now, all of you, I'm sure you loved the traps that I showed you today. This was the opening pitfalls part two. Uh, we will. That's the advantage now of having the separate batches under 1400 and above 1400. So now under 1400 guys can learn so much. There's no disturbance of the above 1400 guys. 
and uh, I'm sure that you have jotted everything properly and now you know how to play. Practice these traps, share on WhatsApp if your opponent fell for these traps. It is now time for us to stop. Namish, I hope that you have made a note of the schedule. You had a doubt about the schedule, I've told you. Wednesdays and Fridays for the under 1400, 6 to 7. And on Monday, you have the Swiss League tournament from 6 to 8. Remember that. It was a great, great pleasure bringing this lecture to you. We'll stop. We will now, for you guys, we will meet on Friday. Okay. Um, take care. Practice these traps.